Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Scam Fish presented by socialcatfish.com. Today we will take a deep dive into one of the worst romance scams we have ever covered. Katie Chi from Chicago, Illinois opened up to us about an online relationship with a man who duped her out of $370,000 using another man's photos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into it. Katie is the mother of two children. She owned a restaurant with her ex-boyfriend and father to her kids. The relationship was unhealthy, so they decided to sell the restaurant after splitting up. You guys broke up, you had this restaurant forever together, and you guys sold the restaurant, and you just wanted something different for your life. Talk, yeah. How did you feel during that time? Were you depressed, or were you just ready to just move on with your life? What was your spirit like? He doesn't care about me, so I'm, I'm ready. I said, once the restaurant get shut down, you go your life, I go my life. This was, this was I made at that time, you know. After they sold the restaurant, Katie put all of her energy into her kids. Once her kids were off to college with little experience, she turned to online dating to look for a companion. You know, I, I remember, I remember it was like 2019 August because this, this, this month my son, he will go to the college. I feel I'll be my only, I feel very lonely. So I need to find some people. So I just go online dating site called Our Time. After a few months of online dating, she met a man named John Baldong. John really knew all the right things to say, but little did she know he was just digging his claws into her. You know, I, I that time I really need, you know, people care about me. He always say, hi, Katie, how are you? Back to home. Are you okay? Do you eat? Something like this one. So I feel this guy, you know, and then he also tell me, he also told me he's a God-fearing person. He really believes in God. He go to the church all the all the time, donation. He make himself like a very good, good wise man. So a uh, very passionate, you know, passionate and the loyalty. So I that's why, you know, he he make me believe him like he's a good man. Katie was having conversations about marrying this man. She was finally happy and couldn't believe she found such a great man. Until things took a turn when John started asking her for money. And then uh, he told me once his, his dream is to marry a woman forever, for, forever with her. You know, this was what he always told me. John claimed he was 56. He was looking to start a construction company. He told Katie that he needed to borrow $21,320 to register his business he was starting. He said he had to open his the company as soon as possible. Have to get his money uh, open. Once he opened, then he came to start a business. He don't want to waste the time. Katie sent the money to John, but it did not stop there. Then he asked me, do you have any money in the other bank? You know, I'm so stupid. I trusted him. I said, yes, I have some money in the Huntington, Huntington Bank, in the, in the city bank. This money, you know, for my kids' tuition. And uh, he's, he always make me believe only two or three months, he finished the contract. He went back to me and uh, he always say, I will pay your interest. I will pay double trouble. You know, I will, I will pay you a lot, a lot of money, you know. The business was now registered, but John kept asking for money. He needed $80,000 for materials to hire people for the job and an additional $70,000 for cleaning products to sanitize the construction site during the COVID pandemic. He always tell me material, labor, labor, he needed 80000 because the 20, 20 hiring, he hiring 20 people and the mm -hmm. They 20 people, each people, how much money and uh, how many a week. And also COVID-19, he need to buy, he need to spend extra money for the hermit, for glove, for right. clean, clean up, uh, a spray for clean every day before or after he have the construction site, he have to clean up. So money always extra, extra. And I uh, say $70,000, you know, I say I don't have this much money. Katie was stuck at this point. She knew she was in deep after sending money, but she felt that if she broke it off with John, she would lose all of her money. John ran out of money to pay his workers to finish the contract, so he borrowed it from Katie. Katie was essentially paying for a whole company's salary for months. The label is high, you know, have, have to pay for the more money. You know, he keep asking me money. 
It's too much. I I even don't believe right now. I even don't believe. He said he have to pay label eighty thousand. After that, he need to pay a little bit extra. Then he have to buy this, have to buy that. He have to pay his hotel, you know, because he living there almost like a six months something. He have to pay hotel bill, have to pay the food. But where exactly did Katie get all of this money from? City Bank, and also I have some money in in the international bank. This kind of money all for my kids, all for my life life savings. So I took everything, and also I borrowed the money like a seventy something from my brother. I make online loan twenty five thousand. I take the four hundred one from the money. It's actually I make the loan because I'm not fifty nine, so I I make the loan from my four hundred one k. So I have to put it back right now. So that's why I have to keep working, and.、Uh, I have my life insurance. They have like a eighty-five, eighty-five thousand like、um, cash. Katie had completely exhausted all of her bank accounts, four hundred one k, life insurance policy, and had run out of people to borrow money from. But John still needed more. He told her that there was an accident on the construction site, and he and his workers were injured, and a few had even died. He asked Katie to pay for the hospital fees. You know, in his in his、uh, construction site, get a problem, get an accident. One people dead, three people get a huge injury. They stay at the hospital. The people is dead, right? He have to, anyway. This is kind of huge money. Have to ask me. I say how I have this kind of money. I already give you all the money. I have zero money. I owe people money. He asking me make the you know refinancing my house. You ask me.、Uh, Katie agreed to send more money. She even tried to refinance her home. Thankfully, the bank denied it. I told I told him. I said, I have a lot in my family. A lot of people like me. If I want to find a man, it's easy for me. I, I'm, you know, if I just want to find some people, better man, good man. If I just want a man, I can't easily find. So how come he using me? Our search specialist Lenny immediately started investigating after the interview. She took a look at the driver's license to verify it was legitimate. The name and address checked out. We found John Baldong in public records. He has phone numbers, relatives, email addresses, and jobs, but we did not find any social profiles to verify the photos. We did a reverse image search on the picture, and it came back to a man named Pham Kongten. He is a producer of exotic fruits. All of the photos that were sent to Katie are on this man's Facebook profile. The driver's license was photoshopped. Another example of Photoshop were these two photos. You can see that this is the original photo. The scammer took the head and put it on the top of a man that was in the hospital. So what a catfish scammer will often do is they'll take images from around the internet and they'll Photoshop the faces of the people that you think you're talking to on the faces. So to prove that they're an engineer, a contractor, or they're stuck somewhere, or that something dramatic happened to them, like they're in the hospital, they'll Photoshop that face and they'll send it to you as proof. Something a little like this. So be wary if that's something you come across, and look for those signs of an actual photoshopped image. The number Katie used to contact John was only found on the website of this company. Katie is now recovering financially. We sent her to a therapist, and we are currently trying to get some of her money back. If some people watch this video, tell the the woman or the lady, you know, never send the money. You never see this in person. I don't want to repeat my story. It was I was used to it. You know, have the more cautious. You have to be careful. You got to protect yourself. Don't do stupid things. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. See you next time. Are you unsure if the person you're talking to online is real or fake? Maybe you've been trying to get a family member or friend to come to terms, and you have a story that you'd like to share about a romance scam. If this is you, email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. By allowing our YouTube audience to hear about your experiences, you can educate them on what you went through and the signs you witnessed. Education is the best way to prevent these scams. Your story could be the reason thousands of scams are prevented.